Okay, welcome everyone. It's November 7th and we're really happy to hear from Richard Gardner today. He's speaking on demystifying dissertation for struggling students. So this is being recorded. If you miss part of it or um, you know you need to access it later, it'll be recorded and put on a SharePoint site. If anyone's having problems, feel free to use the chat at any time. I'm watching the, the chat question box, so feel free to reach out that way. So um, I'm happy to introduce Dr. Or Richard Gardner. And um, Richard Gardner is the Director of Student Learning Service and Support, and he's the Quantitative Learning Specialist at Alliant. He was originally hired under Title V, a Title V grant, but he's been working here over 15 years now. He's written three textbooks, two of them for underprepared middle school students, and one of them is an introductory statistics test text for unprepared undergraduate students. Tongue twister. But he's working on his fourth um, textbook, which is Dissertation Statistics for the Social Sciences Using SPSS. So and one thing that Richard didn't know I did is I reached out to some students and I asked um, for some feedback on how it is working with Richard and, and people said very kind things. One said, he mentors and helps everyone. He's dedicated to his job and he enjoys teaching students. He's very easy to reach and he works well with everyone. I can tell that he truly cares about his student. And another student said, he has great charisma. He makes learning fun, he provides support and tells us what is needed. So I think we're lucky to have Richard at, this, at our university. Um, thanks for doing this presentation for all of us. And um, we're very appreciative to learn from you today. So Richard, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And I'm, I'm starting to see how many people we have on here. It's up to 20 already. So before this starts, I want to apologize for any technical difficulties that I'm about to go through because I always have them. So again, I'm just basically going to, I'm going to throw some ideas at everybody, show you some resources, what we already have for dissertation students. And we're going to save the questions to the last minute. So I, I'm going to talk somewhere around 40, 45 minutes. And I'm going to try to give you guys some time for some questions for the last 15 minutes. OK, so here we go. So the first question is for Jessica. Jessica, I see my picture up here. It's right in the middle of my screen. Are you seeing that? Or, or is everybody seeing that? Or what's going on with that? Yes, we can all see your picture. So I want them to see the PowerPoint. Should I minimize this screenshot of me or? Uh, nope, we see the PowerPoint great and we see you. So I think it from our end, it looks great. Okay, so the picture of me isn't right in the middle of the PowerPoint like it is on mine. No, it's not. Cool, okay, so let me scoot this over so I can see it. Okay, Ta -ta -ta -ta. hello everybody, good afternoon. We're down here in San Diego. My name is Richard Gardner. I run the tutoring center down here and it just started raining, so you know, thank goodness it's been a dry while, but it's raining outside now, so be careful. Okay, so the name of this presentation is Demystifying Dissertations for Struggling Students. And I was just made aware of how many ABD students we have throughout the online campuses. ABD is all but dissertation. That means they've finished all their coursework, but they haven't finished their dissertation. And the number's quite big. It's alarming. It's over 400. So that's that's what we're going to try to address today, is try to help these guys finish their dissertation. Okay, so next. So I thought I'd throw some humor in there, right? Lions and tigers and dissertations. Oh, my. <laughs> that's pretty funny. So if, if I had a magic wand... And I use that a lot, the magic wand analogy. If I had a magic wand, what I would like to come up with is a, a dissertation app, right? They can use them on your smartphones. But, you know, everybody uses apps these days. And it would look something like this. So a dissertation support services and the main four different delivery support systems would be the entire process. Right to show the students step by step everything that needs to be done from you know from soup to nuts from scratch on the the process of of writing a dissertation right the dissertation is going to be their 
It's going to be their mot juste. It's going to be their grand academic adventure. It will be because these guys have been going to school for, you know, what, 20, 25 years. So their dissertation should be the best thing they've ever done when it comes to any kind of schoolwork. We want to help them with that. So if we show them the process and have a, an outline, I'm really big on outlines these days, that it gives them something to go by. Okay, so part of that is research. They have to do a lot of research on what they're going to be writing about. And um, so I'm going to try to point everybody to the library. I'm going to show you some of the library research um, support that we already have in video form or, you know, PDFs from the other campuses. <clears throat> and then just overall support. By that, I mean writing support and statistics support. That's the main thing that um, people ask me to help with is, is the statistics side or the writing side. And unfortunately, the tutoring center, we can't, we don't have the manpower to help with both dissertations and the classwork. Our main focus here at the tutoring center down here in San Diego is to get the students through their coursework first. Okay, so that's, that keeps us busy. We have roughly a eh, hundred students taking statistics on any given semester of which at least half of them need regular tutoring, tutoring services. That's usually like once a week. And so that keeps us busy down here. And the last, the last button there is the IRB process. I know it can be, what's a good word, maddening, but the IRB only makes the student think more clearly on what exactly it is that they're going to be writing their dissertation on. So I thought of a great mission statement for the Dissertation Support Center, and it's, it's to provide timely, appropriate support, feedback, you know, benchmarks, milestones, important information that guides the students to make sure that they get through this progress on a good, timely fashion, okay? We don't want them spending too much time, you know, not finishing their dissertation. Can you guys see him? He's one of my students. So, it promotes a graduate culture of scholarship. I'm, I'm, don't worry about it. These guys will know you. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> and again, if I if I go too fast, I do get kind of excited because, uh, you know, I feel we've been very very successful with the coursework. We have getting we you know we're really really good at getting these guys through their coursework to graduate their classes. You know, help them with their big projects, their class projects, and get them on time. So, but now we're switching over to the dissertation. We're going to put it on our dissertation hat. Let me show you the available resources right now that we have. Okay. So, from the Alliant webpage, the, the front page of the Alliant webpage, there's a quick link box, and everything that we have to offer here is down there at the Academic Support and Tutoring Center. So I'm going to click out of this PowerPoint and show you the actual website after this page. Okay, so it looks like that. So give me a second. I'm going to pull out of the PowerPoint and actually show the websites and all of our wonderful things that we have there. And okay, so Jessica, are you seeing this? Yeah, we can see you, that you exited and that you're logging in right now. Okay, yeah, there's always a drag time between what I click on my computer and what you guys are seeing, okay? So, yeah. so when you log in to the My Alliant portal, okay, pay no attention to these. I, I have God mode, so I can get into almost everybody's web page. But right here on the quick links, first step, academic support and tutoring. Okay. This is our main support in as few pages as possible, okay? Less is more, right? We don't want to confuse the students <clears throat> with too much information, so, you know, less is more. So here's the main page, Academic Support and Tutoring. That's us down here in San Diego. I try to put everything online, okay, so the other campuses can use it. And I have a list of all the... Um, directors of campus services for each of the different campuses. So if you, if, you, if you have a student looking for support, have them start with the director of each campus and then 
we'll, we'll try to figure out what we can do to help. All right, part two, we are using a, a new beta system. It's an online live tutoring system, but we basically use it for writing, okay, for the writing resources. Now, having said that, we cannot have everybody submitting, you know, a 150-page dissertation and say, please edit it for me. They will not do that, okay? So we have restrictions on that, but they will do up to five pages at a time. So if you got stuck with a certain section or something, you might want to send your student to BrainFuse to submit a five-page paper because it is reviewed by professionals and they have two options. They can work live, real-time, one-on-one. It's, it, it's a lot like Google Docs if you've ever used that. Or they could submit the paper to BrainFuse and then get it returned within 24 hours with the tutor's remarks on the side of the paper, which is, you know, and everybody that uses it loves it, okay? So the brain fuse tutors are your A number one, okay? <clears throat> okay, moving on. So I'm gonna take you into the Hawk Moodle resources. That is, the Hawk stands for Higher Achievement, Wisdom, and Knowledge, and anything with Hawk in it means it's a tutoring. That, that's how you differentiate, differentiate between the Moodles, and they're all self-enrolling. So if, if the number one issue I get with most students is they don't realize that these resources even exist. Okay? So how to do it is send a student to the to their Moodle page, scroll down to the very bottom, there's a tiny search box down there. And if they type in the word hawk, then every hawk Moodle will show up. And once they click in there, it will automatically show up every time they go to the, their Moodle site the next time. Okay. So writing support, I think I just went over that with you. Now I'm going to take you to the a writing Moodle. Okay, let's do that right now. And we, our tutors put this together. But we have, um, we have the APA website. There's a lot of good free resources there. We have a Turnitin plagiarism checker through this website, through this Moodle right here. And there's a video on how to use it, okay? It's not, it's not exactly user-friendly, but again, watch the video tutorial on how to use it, turnitin.com. We strongly suggest that students turn it in first and get the, and get the report from turnitin.com, and if they didn't cite something correctly, they shouldn't be able to see it on the side, on the, on the output of the turnitin assignment.com, okay? So, Turn it in, free, free for aligned students. And then we have a ton of different APA formatting examples. Okay. Um, don't even know where to start. We have so many different APA formatting things. Go ahead and, you know, just knock yourself out, look, look them over. Um, we have SPSS output APA formattings. We have citations. We have online citations, everything, everything. APA is in here somewhere. Don't ask me. I'm not really a language guy. I'm more of a numbers guy. But you know. okay, and then we got general writing tips and uh, the Purdue Owl website. If you've never used it before, never been there, you should go. It is a remarkable website. All of these down here are remarkable websites, and we just basically put the links in there. You know, shamelessly borrowed them, but you know, have no complaints so far. And if, if we have something here that if, if you want to be a writing tutor for us here in our little tutoring center, we have a, an APA test that will, you know, if you pass it, then I can hire you as a tutor. And I'll be honest with you, I've failed it three times already. So, <laughs> but again, um, everything about writing, in-text citations. And I put the cute little pictures up there to try to make it less, what's a good word, um, less formal, right? We, we, we like to keep it everything uplifted and spirited here. Okay, so that is the Hawk Writing Tutoring Center. That's that's all the online resources, but let's keep going. So the number one request we get down here is for statistics. Statistics, statistics, statistics. I think I told you we have about 100 people taking stats on every semester, and we got, I don't know, six, seven, eight different teachers. And of course, everybody teaches a little bit different just to keep me on my toes. <laughs> so what 
what we did here was I made several different hawks and I'm going to show them to you when the time comes. I'm not going to show them to you now. Okay, so, but in, in a few minutes, I'm going to take you to each hawk and just give you a brief overview of what each one of these does. Okay. So, back to the PowerPoint. We still good? You guys see that? Yeah, we see the um, the writing support still. There we go. Now we see the PowerPoint. Cool. Okay. So we have 27. Wow, look at all these people. See how many people I know. Uh, hey, I just see that. I see that. Here's Erica. Hi, Erica. Hiroko. Hiroko. Jennifer, Jason, Judy, Eli. Hey, Ramesh. Uh, Mackenzie. Hey, Mac. Well, there's Jill. Hi, Jill. And there's Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. And there's Vanya. Hi, Vanya. Okay, here we go. Okay, where we go? Next page. Let's try that again. Next page. There we go. So that, that's the link to the page I just went to. Again, this is the main page to get all the information links. On the, on, on the first page of the Maya Land portal. Okay. So we get flooded with statistics. The bad news is I only have one stats tutor this semester and he can only give me three hours on Wednesday. Um, last year I had seven stats tutors and they were basically all over the place so I didn't, I didn't have to work as hard as I am working now. But let me show you the different statistics. Um, again, they're called the Hawks. Hawk one is, is basic statistics. So what I try to do is I try to get all the incoming graduate students, all of them, to at least look at the Hawk one. It's it, it goes over pie charts, bar graphs, but but the important things that they need to know in advanced statistics class, like p values, like z scores, standardization, what a competence interval is, all all that kind of thing. So let's just go there now. Hold on. Get out of, I'm jumping out of the PowerPoint, and going to our Alliant resources. So just kind of curious, I, I assume everybody knows about these online Hawk resources, but apparently that's not the case. Okay, but let's go to our, there's our Hawk writing. Let me go to our Hawk one. <clears throat> and in these Hawks, there are hundreds of videos on how to do all of them, okay? Hundreds of videos. So here's Hawk 1. I encourage every incoming student to review the basics of statistics because that's usually the problem of why they're struggling in advanced statistics is because they have forgotten the foundation of statistics. Okay, so starts with graphs, goes into the, you know, the, the what do we call these? Um, measures of central tendency. And uh, yes, this is way back when I used to make goofy stuff. I, you know, I fell in love with rollovers and weird stuff. But every chapter has a guided homework, guided homework answers, guided homework videos on how I got the answers in Excel, in SPSS. And a lot of you guys still teach by hand, so we do a lot of these by hand. And that's always fun. So z-scores, correlations, regressions, general probabilities, which they don't get used as much anymore. Hardly anybody uses general probabilities, binomial probabilities, and there's a ton of self-assessment. The tests, they're not real tests. They can take them multiple times, but again, if I was teaching this stuff, this is what I would expect you to know. That's what we use as tests for. And then again, sampling distributions, competence intervals, um, the basics of tests of significance. Make make sure that they know this one. And then I do some t-tests by hand in Excel. And the last ones are sample proportions, which aren't used much anymore. I, I don't really know why, but what the heck. And then I finish it up with the chi-square test. 
So let's go to Hawk 2. Hawk 2 is aligned with the first semester of advanced statistics here on this course, on this campus. Norman and then, um, I, I basically follow Dr. Gewurz's teachings. He was the one that got me going in the first place. And I understand him quite well. And he goes quite deeply into the statistics. And I hire my students from his course. So, so some of the, some of the Dr. Gewurz students that do well, I hire as tutors. Okay. So this chapter covers t-tests, all three of them. ANOVAs, every kind of ANOVA that you can think of I have in here. MANOVAs, ANCOVAs, MANCOVAs, etc., etc. And again, every chapter, every section has everything I can think of, all the assumptions of each test, how to run the test by hand or in Excel or in SPSS, and guided homework. Again, if, if, if these students want the short version, have them go to the guided homework. It has all the pertinent questions. Everything that what I consider important that they should know is in the guided homework. They could practice it on themselves first. If they don't get it, they can look at the answers in any answer videos. Okay, so that that's the entire section in a nutshell. <clears throat> and then one way and overs, um, plan comparisons. Anybody still uses those? Post hoc tests. Within group ANOVAs, factorial ANOVAs, more factorial ANOVAs, mixed ANOVA, everybody's worst nightmare. And then your ANCOVAs and MANCOVAs. So, and again, the SPSS video tutorials, they're all over the place in here. Okay, there's there must be 50 of them in this one hawk. And if you have anybody struggling with the methodology comp exam, I have a practice test with about 30 questions in there, and there's a video tutorial on how to answer each one using SPSS, okay, even the write-ups, APA write-ups, et cetera, et cetera. So that's Hawk 2. One more Hawk, no, one more Hawk 3 for the statistics. But I'll be honest with you, not everybody uses the Hawks. Again, the number one complaint I hear is they don't even know that these hawks exist. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to convince the teachers to put them in their, put them into your syllabi. You know, maybe maybe take five minutes and show them what kind of resources we have here. Everybody that uses them loves them. So, but again, for some reason, there are some students out there that will not use these. They will not watch the videos. They will not read the the literature that I have on everything. They just, I don't, I don't quite get that, but it keeps me employed. So here we go. Hawk 3 is the second semester of advanced statistics. Okay, it starts with correlations, and then it jumps into all the different regression models. So basic regression, stepwise, hierarchical, mediation, moderation, everybody's favorite, logistic regression, don't get a lot of people using that, but that was fun learning how to do it myself. <clears throat> factor analysis. So if they're going to write a survey, they should they need to they need to check out the factor analysis, the exploratory factor analysis. I have a confirmatory factor analysis, but I'll be honest with you, only one person in 10 years has asked me, so I'm not really gonna. It's it's not it's not worthy of, of me putting a lot of time in because nobody's using it. <clears throat> and then path analysis which is from Amos, which is another software program, part of the SPSS. And then we, we ended up with the hardest statistical test known to man, the structural equation modeling. And I'll tell you, this one is a killer from Manila. So, but it's all here, right? I do three of them. I do three different structural equation modelings. Same thing, guided homework. What I expect them to know, how to run it, how to get the answers. And there's a confirmatory factor analysis, which I, you know, again, because nobody asked, I'm not going to do it. But how are we doing? How are we doing on time? 2.25. All right, so let's get back to our PowerPoint. And, oh, let me show you one little thing that I'm proud of, and that, again, that most students aren't even aware of, 
It is, so you go to academic support. It's, it's what I call the statistics pictionary, okay? You pick, you pick any letter. I took every statistical vocabulary word I could find, and I put them in alphabetical order, and I put a definition up there. I put videos up there. This is my tutor uh, a long time ago. This is the wonderful Christina Wong. Put everything that starts with E, how to do them, um, what they mean, and if there's, if there's something linked on the hawk, I, I link it back to the hawk. So there's a ton of resources, and I really like this one. I really like this one because it's alphabetical order. Okay, main effects, simple effects, Again, everything, everything statistics is in here somewhere. All right, back to the PowerPoint. You guys caught up? Yep, we are. Thank you. All right, the second most the uh, the second most popular request for tutoring we get is writing. So the writing thing comes down about eh, seventy five percent are ESL students and about twenty five percent are domestic students, and we again we focus on getting students to do their classwork, through their coursework. We cannot we cannot offer editing services for the writing. For the dissertation students, we would be flooded. But I got to tell you guys this: um, not a semester goes by where I don't re receive about at least like a half a dozen entire dissertations from students I've never even heard of before, and they say, "Can you please look this over for accuracy?" It always puts a smile on my face. So you know, you know what the answer to that is. But the writing support again. Um, if they want to break it down in little pie page chunks, they can use brain views. And here in San Diego, we have we only have three writing tutors this semester for a grand total of about 10 hours a piece. So and, and they're busy all the time with with coursework, not with dissertation work. So for dissertation things, um, I'm gonna bring something up at the tail end of this and, and take a quick vote or something. So now, okay, so this is a big two. Statistics and writing. So here's some more available support services. It's in the last hawk that I made. It's called Hawk 5 Dissertation Toolbox Hawk. So again, let's go there. And so let me let me figure out where I want to put you guys. So okay. This is the dissertation hawk, hawk five, again. So for you got a dissertation students, send them to the home page of, our, of the LA Moodle, scroll down to the bottom, type in hawk, click on hawk five. Hawk five is, I try to focus all and anything and everything that would help a dissertation student. So in no particular order here, I have a list of videos and resources on the Hawk 5. That probably needs to be updated. Um, a quickie research design video, whether you want to do a quantitative or qualitative video. And i got to be honest with you, we tend to live, uh, lean towards quantitative because we get 10 times as many requests for quantitative as we do qualitative. But here's some writing resources, right? How to write a proposal by our own beloved Courtney, who is no longer here. But she, you know, she shows how to write a, propose, a successful proposal, how to write a literature review, some videos, some good writing techniques, how to avoid plagiarism, um, more writing tips, more writing tips done by different people. Okay, so some of this stuff was done about four or five years ago by different people. So again, send them to this, the Hawk Five, for any kind of writing questions. Just have them check this stuff out. I mean. It's everybody that watches it thinks it was very, very helpful, okay? So dissertation formatting examples, and because of different schools, of course we have different formats for different programs. I 
just I didn't realize it was so different. But I do have an example of a PsyD dissertation. And there's the link to the CSPP dissertation guidelines. But we also have a business school and an education school and what else we got? Something else. But but again, every every school should have its own little um, you know, here, here's an example. This is what we want you to do. CFT. And and here's a just a dissertation from Texas, which I thought was outstanding, so I just put it in there. What the heck? Go Texas. And then quantitative. Again, this is just the Hawk statistics things. I'm not going to go over this stuff again. But again, send them back to the Hawks. And then decision trees is, are which test to use. And I'll be honest with you, these decision trees are not easy to use. So, but, you know, good luck. <gasps> Excuse me. And, okay, so we do have an SDSS online. Let me put that out there right now. Students can access an SPSS online version through Alliant. It's free to them. The problem is it's not exactly user friendly. Okay, let me show you what we have on that. Oops, sorry, please hold. And again, you go back to the original uh, academic support page. And you're going to see right there, SPSS Online version 23. Here's the link how to get there. Please, please, please have them watch this video. Because the software works fine. It's an online, right? It's in the cloud somewhere, Philadelphia. The problem is getting your SPSS data from your computer to the online version of SPSS. That is not user friendly. So that's why I made the video showing step by step how to get data from your computer to the online cloud and vice versa, how to save it from the cloud back to your computer, okay? But again, it's a nice little program. So, and of course, people with Macs, it doesn't work right, but there are some different tips that, that work for some people and some people they don't. So worst case scenario, if you cannot get SPSS online, um, I, I try to send people to the IT department Normally, one of one of those smart student workers over there can figure it out, and usually it's just a click of a button or something. But, but that's SPSS. And Richard Curtis said um, he typed in that SPSS server has limited resources and therefore cannot support many concurrent users. So. Oh, Curtis, do do we still have to pre-enroll the students before they use it? I just unmuted you, Curtis. I don't know if you, he said yes. Thanks. Yeah, um, there is a security group that controls who can get on that. That's to, that's to prevent somebody that's not an Alliance student potentially getting onto the site. Also, there are student discounts available. Um, Help Desk should be able to point students if they would prefer to have their own version of SPSS without investing an absolute bundle. It's available for, I believe it's about $50 for a six month and $90 for a one year subscription. Yeah, it's getting real cheap. Yeah, so, okay. All right, so they do have to be pre-enrolled. Okay, so that that's the part, that's why they couldn't get to it in my class. Okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah. All right, Thanks. Curtis, get off, get off the line. <laughs> Gladly. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Dissertation book to a box. So I just put something to, together recently. It is this. Hold on. Let me get back into the phone. It's this, right? I love the clock with the money, 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 money. So time is money, especially when writing a dissertation. No question about it. Time is money. I personally would Try to convince everybody that is on a board or a chair to hassle these students, you know, ride shotgun on them, contact them regularly, find out exactly where they are, because what we learned here in the tutoring center is if, is if you do that, if you constantly check with students, they tend to produce, which is what we want. So this is what I made. Let me, let me pull this up real quick again. 
and it is in our Hawk 5, and it's way down here at the bottom, and it's called, it's very bottom, right? Um, just it's, it's it's under this heading, this demystifying dissertations, and it's this. Go ahead and download it. I, you guys have my permission to use it any way you want. I call it objectives and tasks sheet, and so it's just each semester. Hold on, I got that one all messed up. Boom. Sorry, my bad. Okay, save it. Boom. But I took the five chapters from a dissertation. I broke it down into individual baby steps. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. So what I was hoping to do was, you know, convince the students to start using this and giving themselves realistic timelines on when they're going to accomplish each one of these little tasks. Now, you professors out there, you board members and chairs, you can add in anything you want here, because I, you know, I'm not 100% sure what you want when it comes to writing a dissertation. But I think that if a student is aware of, of what needs to be done and when, that will get them through this. Most of our students are very, very hardworking students, so that's not the issue. The issue is somebody's just got to keep reminding them this is due when, right? Bam, bam, bam. And so, again, just please look it over, download it. You can use it for whatever you want, put in your own information. You could put the times in there, right? If you're on their board, you could say, I expect to see your first draft of your proposal by, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they just make sure they know, right? And so, literature review, there's a lot to go in literature review, right? They got to learn all those. Full text databases, um, you know, look up literature. They got to read, read, read. They got to read until they drop. And while they're reading, they need to code their literature, take out the important excerpts, keep a record. So when it comes time to writing them, their their literature review, they can simply cut and paste what they've already taken out, and it's already been properly cited. Methodology, that seems to be. Uh, a major touchy feely subject around here because a lot of people they just don't know the statistics they need to finish their dissertation and I kind of agree with them because most of our programs we, we hit them right day one on their first day of graduate school here we hit them with advanced statistics and they normally don't write their dissertations for until four or five years later and you know I agree with them they don't remember anything so, again, I try to send them back to the to the online resources. Hopefully, that'll shake something loose. And okay, there's the results, and I also put something in there um, for conclusions. But like, time for your dissertation, right? Practice, practice, practice. Be confident. Succeed. Get published. Reward yourself. Go out and get a job. Yep, yep, yep. Hopefully, that'll all come in that order. And okay, so let's get this guy back going, back to the PowerPoint. We cool, everybody still here? So the, the task and object the, the, the tasks and objective sheets, please use them at your own any any way you want. Okay. Research support. That is in the Hawk 5. And Scott Zimmer, our gifted librarian, has a couple of videos on how to access anything and everything. So have them, you know, just watch that again. Writing support, I beat that to death already. APA formatting, it's all over the place. I'm going to give you one quick tour of the. Of the um, Hawk 5, the Dissertation Toolbox, Advanced Support Statistics. So there's an old saying, a good dissertation is a finished dissertation. So let me, let me give you a real quick one last tour of the Hawk 5 because it's got, I got a Qualtrics section. 
how to get a Qualtrics account through the Alliant account. It's free, okay? Do not pay for it. Alliant pays for Qualtrics, okay? There's the link to Qualtrics, how to get the account. It's easy. There's a video on how to do the basics of Qualtrics. I love Qualtrics. Qualtrics is actually a very robust system. So, again, there's a Qualtrics section. If anybody doesn't know how to do the survey, we even have a qualitative methodology section um, by two people. Dr. Marianne Miller did one a couple years ago that was fantastic. And Dr. Nino just did one recently, again, which was fantastic. We get a lot of, lot of um, good reviews from this qualitative part. Uh, library research, we got video have, of Scott up there showing you how to navigate your way through the through the computer, and he did two of them. He did one a couple years ago. He did one this year. We have the PowerPoints in there. Uh, literature review. This is from the gifted LA librarian Aaron. Real good examples, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think the rest of this stuff is something we've already gone over. And the clock says we're almost out of time, but let me finish this up. So, something I've been meaning to ask everybody, how do we feel about students going out and paying editors? Are we okay with that? Are we not okay with that? And by editors, I mean somebody to check their, you know, APA formatting, the writing editors, or this, or someone pay somebody to do the statistics for them. Okay, so we as a group should decide whether we're against it or we're not against it, or we're someplace in the middle. The main thing that I get with with statistics people that have paid an editor, and I won't mention any names, but I had a young lady in here two weeks ago. She paid somebody a lot of money to run her data. And she wanted me to teach her how to explain it to her board members. And it was just a nightmare. So I, you know, shooting myself in the foot, I said, okay, just for a quick hour. And I ran the test for her in about 10 minutes. And, and whoever she paid to do it did not do it right. The, the data violated all the assumptions. So she used the wrong test, which means the results were wrong. And so I, I, I wrote it up real quick what she should have done, and I sent her back to the editor that she paid all this money to. But again, they come to me and expect me to explain it well enough so they can explain it to you guys. So that, you know, that doesn't sit well with me. Richard, right, got, can you unmute yeah. anyone? Are you looking? Oh, great. We're at this part anyway. So I, I'll go ahead and I'll unmute everyone just so you know. Um, and that, that way we can have some questions and more of a discussion at the end here. Okay. I guess I'm doing it one by one. I thought I could do everyone at the same time. So. Okay. Well, you know. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I think you can hear me now, Richard. Yes, now. Yeah, we can hear you, Stephanie. Yep. Is that you, Stephanie? Yeah, but now I can't hear Richard. Oh, Flips Richard. Let's see. Did you mute? Did you mute Richard? <laughs> Not purposely. Okay. Okay, Richard. Hey, Richard. Hey, Steph. Hey. So I think that's a really good question. I think it's going to be very difficult to come up with a common answer. I mean, we certainly have a history of people. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Stephanie, we, we can't hear you. Let's see. Now can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay. So you didn't hear me at all before, or no? We, no, we I, I heard the first part. Yeah. Okay. 
so I think you know I think it, it's an interesting question. I don't know how we would ever monitor or really take a firm position on this. Um, we're always going to run the risk of what happened recently with you and that student, um, you know, repeating itself. I think we. I mean, I was quite surprised. We just had a forensic person do their dissertation, and they paid people to. I can't remember. There, there was something very different about um, what what they had done, but but um, you know we have a long history of people who are like you know let me get through my stats class and then I'll just hire a stats person to run my data. But then, just as you suggested, then it's going to be very difficult when they're doing their final defense for them to really uh, you know articulate that. So I don't know who else is on the line that might have a, a response to that question. I hear that it's quite commonly practiced at other schools. That when it comes to the time they run their dissertation statistics, they simply they have a long list of, of, of tutors that they will hire editors. They can do stats. They can hire an, a stats editor. Absolutely. And then nobody thinks twice of it. So. And I don't know how we would monitor it if we wanted to take a position where you have to do your own stats, you have to, you know, you have to do this yourself. Um, I don't know how we would ever be able to monitor that. Well, somebody on the board should be able to ask them these stats questions that the students should be able to answer. Like, you know, did you run a power analysis? Did you check the assumptions? Et cetera, et cetera. And the students should be able to know the answers. That's how you can tell. I suspect there'd be so many variables with regard to the configuration of all these committees in terms of folks that would be perfectly fine saying it does, doesn't matter and others who it would matter a great deal to. Yeah, I agree. Um, for I think, us, this I think this forensic student just paid somebody to actually do all the survey. Yeah. That, I had not heard that before. Yeah, I, I've, yeah, it's it's not uncommon. Let me put it that way. It, it, but it basically depends on which program these guys are in. Some programs, it's pretty rampant, and in other programs, it's it's rare. It's rare that they don't do their own work in some programs. But again, in other programs, it's it's probably over fifty percent of them. Well, just paid a professional. Yeah. <coughs> Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say in our program about 95% of our students, which are adult professional students um, working full time, they usually do qualitative research. However, they're not limited in that if they'd like to do quantitative research, we've also you know, certainly um, allowed them to do that. And when they do it though, because they don't take enough in statistics to probably be able to run their own stats, what we ask them to do is contact the faculty that teaches research design and teaches the quantitative side of research. And so there's a specified person that the chair recommends that they go to and all the faculty do the same thing. So that's how we've covered that being able to get help with their stats. But then they're responsible for being able to communicate it during their own defense. I mean, so it's not that they go to somebody else and say, how do I talk about this? It's our faculty instructor that is an adjunct that actually works with them. So, But it's about 5% of our students. It's not a lot at all. Okay. So and the other, one other thing, I want to answer the other part of your question, which is we do use a formatter. They don't have to use a formatter, but if the library doesn't accept their dissertation, then they're going back and doing all that work again. However, we use a formatter because, as I said, these are full-time working students, and the formatter checks their APA and makes sure that their dissertation is in the exact form that the library demands. So that's Who the does way. the formatting? That's the formatting. Who does it, though? Who's the formatter? It's Mary Jane Cavanaugh who's been doing it for about 15 years wow. and knows exactly what the Fresno campus needs. But as I said, not everyone's, they're not required to do that. That's their option. And for the full-time working students, that's generally their option. Yeah. 
you know, someone do it. Everybody want that option. They put it. They put it all together, and it's in a final draft form that is very closely aligned to the requirements. However, it's Mary Jane who really goes through it and checks it out and makes sure that it's absolutely correct and as perfect as she can make it as a human being. So that's the way we have done our dissertation. Mm -hmm. And who's this speaking? I'm sorry. This is Sherry. Sherry, I thought so. It's Stephanie. Yeah. Hi, Steph. <laughs> so that okay. Thank you for that, Sherry. Now I'm I'm happy to hear that you will send the student to a, a faculty member to get help with stats. So I'm going to ask everybody online right now for a big favor: is do not do not send them to me. I just do not have time to handle <laughs> dissertation students. And it, you know, a day doesn't go by where I don't work on three or four of them. I, I'm my own worst enemy. If I've been working with with a student for two or three or four years, I'm not going to turn them away when it comes to their dissertation. But you know, worst case scenario, I worked with a with a somebody last year for eight months, eight months, three to four hours a week, every week for eight months. She keeps coming in and and you know that's just you know. so again, don't send them to me because the. the on the San Diego campus, I know everybody's just saying, "Go see Rich, go see Rich." Go see Rich. But I just, I, you know, I hate the term away. But I, I'll be honest with you, I'm like the Rain Man now. I'm, I'm so good at statistics, I could probably knock the whole thing out in an hour. I can run their tests, I can write them up, tell them what it means, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As long as the data is not, a, you know, a hot mess, when sometimes it is, but usually it's okay. But again, I, we, we need to come up with a new plan. We need a mechanism. Done. Richard, there's a question in the, the chat box I'll pass on to you. It's um, from Celia Lopez, and she said she has a student that's struggling with her dissertation, and she sent her the Hawk information, and um, the student may be reaching out to you. But you mentioned you only have one um, stats tutor. So is that an option for students to, to use that stats tutor? So it works like this. If, if they mention the D word, uh, all of my tutors are to, pop, to kindly say, we're sorry, we do not do dissertations. Please go back to your chair or your board. So have your student not use the D word and just say, you know, what are your questions? You know, which test would I use in this situation? Or how do I run a, a factorial ANOVA in SPSS? If they're specific with the questions and they don't use the dissertation word, Yes, my tutor will help, but it's, it's rarely that simple, rarely that simple. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll wait just one more minute. Any other last questions for Richard while we have him on the line here? Or comments in general about this topic? Well, I think you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're quite welcome. Do we have anybody from the San Francisco campus on? Any San Francisco professors on this, on this call? Uh. I'll take that as a no. I don't. There, there's some that are still muted. So, and it looks like um, Dean Jones, the librarian from San Francisco, is on the line. We used to have a tutoring center at the San Francisco campus by my good friend Sorelli, uh, and I know she left a couple years ago when they did all this reformatting stuff. But did they ever open up another tutoring lab there in San Francisco? I don't. I don't think they did, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't know anybody on the San Francisco campus. No, I don't think so. Um, Shannon says we do have tutors, oh, but they, they don't have one at the moment, is what Dean replied. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to convince the powers that be that we need to, we need to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to convince them to start a dissertation support center to do just what we do for dissertation students, 
than what we do for the in-class students, right? We just we just do the same thing that we've been doing. I mean, the the ABD number is just is unacceptable. It just burns me to know that these guys, the students have, have been put in all this time, all this money, not written a dissertation. I mean, that just that goes against my nature, and I want to get these guys finished and over with it. I know they can do it. They just need somebody to. They need a drill instructor to, you know, keep them on track. I think we saw a decrease in stu in uh, tutors when things switched, where we only had federal work study monies available to pay students to work on campus. Oh, Prior yeah, to that, that, there was there was a non work study budget that we could use to pay tutors. So that's that's that when things shifted. I used to hire international students. Absolutely. Who, pound for pound, are much better at math than than American students. I hate to say it, but it's true. So careful there. <laughs> you know, we, we do a terrible job in America at the public school level. Mm -hmm. You can see the incoming graduate, the incoming undergraduate students. You know, the 19 and 20 years old. Yeah. They're like at the sixth or seventh grade math levels. I don't blame the students. I blame yeah. I blame the school districts. They don't. It's changed a lot in the last several years, especially with writing. That Common Core stuff is a joke. I mean, they just they keep watering down the curriculum. They keep lowering the bar. I mean, it's to the point now where you know high school Greek really doesn't mean much for ninety percent of the students. Ten percent of the students that come in are, are very well prepared. They're ready at the college level, and I think at the graduate level. It's it's probably much higher. It's probably like seventy five or eighty percent are ready for graduate level stuff, but not for statistics. They haven't had statistics. They they, they it scares them and terrifies them. They are yeah uh -huh. for sure. We gotta we gotta change that culture. Hello, is you back with us? It's been so helpful, Richard. Well, you're quite welcome. You know, I am here for you guys, but remember, don't send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Richard, thank you. Lots of great information today. It was helpful to see all those Hawk videos and lots of information that you've put together. So very appreciative of you today during this presentation, and thank you, everyone, who's been here. There was a question at the beginning asking if this would be um, posted, if the PowerPoint would be posted. So, Richard, if it's okay with you, I would like to post the PowerPoint. Um, along with the recording, and that will be on a SharePoint page. And I put it in one of the. I responded to the question. I don't know if you guys can see the response, which is the SharePoint, but I can probably send it out to all the people on this call as well in an email. So um, thank you, Richard. Great job today. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. You're quite welcome, and Jessica. Thank you for putting this together, and the rest of you guys, thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> thank you. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.